Hey everybody, welcome back. In this episode, I'm going to show you how you can print something from the back end of your web application using a utility called CUPS, which stands for Common Unix Printing System. Now, CUPS is a sort of middleware that you could install in a Linux system, and that contains sort of the printer drivers and allows you to send a PDF or text file to a printer and have it print out without your application having to worry about printer drivers. There are two variants of the CUPS program command line interface. One variant, which uses the shell command LP, is based on the System 5 Unix printing system developed by AT&T in the 1980s. The other command line interface, shell command LPR, is based on the OpenBSD printing system developed by Berkeley. Although each command line interface has its historical origin in a respective distinct printing system, the modern cup spring system, which by the way is created and maintained by the Apple company, just adopts these old interfaces and both the LP and LPR commands now both use the same CUPS drivers underneath the hood. The main reason that we have two interfaces is to make migrations and compatibility with old software easier. Here's a diff of the manual pages for both the LP and LPR commands. Installing CUPS is easy using package managers. I installed it on my Debian instance using the command apt-get install cups, cups bsd. Next I'm going to use the lp admin command to add a printer for my local network. I'm going to grab the printer details from my Windows network info page and it's only showing the IP version 6 address here which we could probably use but I'd like to use the IP4 address so I'm going to get that by cross-referencing that IP6 address on my router's administration page to get the IP version 4 address. Now that we have the IP address, we can use the LP admin command to add that printer to CUPS and this Linux instance. So here are the parts of the command. Dash P specifies what you're going to be using as the printer name for when you're referencing it in future commands. The dash capital E tells it to use an encrypted connection. And following the dash V, you're going to specify the web address on the local network that CUPS can connect to the printer with. And this is where we're going to be using that IP address. We'll be connecting using the IPP protocol. So finally, the dash M option tells it what kind of protocol to use when connecting to the printer and sending the data. And the text everywhere specifies the IPP protocol which at this point is the only valid option that you can use nowadays with CUPS. We can try to run this command now, but oops, we've got a bad file descriptor error. And this is because the CUPS background service is not running. We could easily restart it using the command sudo service CUPS restart. Now LP admin should work. To do the printing now, we could send a file to CUPS using the LP command and specifying the file name. You can send it a text file, a PDF, or an image. My preference is to do PDF. I've also tested running CUPS from a Docker container, and I found that it works just as well that way, as long as the printer can be found through the Docker networking. For a Ruby program, if you want to be able to design the back end of your application to send information directly to a printer, then CUPS is the easiest way of going about doing that. I think the easiest way of using CUPS is to generate what you want to print into a PDF file, save the PDF file somewhere on the local web server, and then use the LP command to send that PDF to the printer. Now, if you're doing a really large print job that involves lots of pages, CUPS is really useful for this sort of situation because you could generate your PDF in a background job using a tool like Sidekick, which will run it in a separate thread. And then that'll prevent the front end from locking up as the user waits for the web request to come back. So you have you could probably generate the PDF and send it to the user, but since that might take a few seconds, maybe you could just send it directly to the printer and the user will be going to the printer 
while that PDF is being generated. Anyway, I hope this was a helpful video to you and give you another tool to use in your programming toolbox. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video.